Okay, move on for the next speaker of the session. And our next speaker is Sison Kim. He's also from University of Oklahoma, and uh, he will be presenting um, his talks, uh, talk titled Scalable Genuine Multipartite multi Entanglement with Parametric Amplifier Networks. And um, Sison, you can take over from here. Thank you, Logan, for introduction. Hi, my name is Jason Kim. I work to Marinos Quantum Objects Group, which is part of the Center for Quantum Research and Technology at the University of Oklahoma. We are excited to share with you our theoretical proposal of generating genuine multiparty entanglement in continuous variable domain. The genuine multiparty entanglement is a bipartite inseparable state that has the strongest form of non locality in multiparty system. So it, is, it has been considered as a rich resource for the quantum information processing. Due to the strong non-locality, it has been proposed to using the teleportation and dense coding and speed up the key rate of the quantum key distribution and can be used to reach the highest sensitivity in quantum interferometry. There are two different approaches to entangle the system, discrete and uh, continuous variable. And a lot of work has been done in the discrete domain but here we want to focus on the continuous variable domain because it provides a deterministic generation of the light. And also it's easier to scale up to the multiparty entanglement. Recently, it has been shown about 60 modes of the multiparty entanglement using the frequency comb and more than millions of modes of entanglement by multiplexing in the time domain. However, there are disadvantages of the continuous variable domain. One of the problem is that the degree of the entanglement is not high, uh, not as high, and uh, the other problem is that they are vulnerable to the losses. So there are two different ways, two different tools we can use to generate the multipartite quantum system. It can be generated by the chi nonlinear crystal in cavity called optical parametric oscillator and chi-3 parametric amplifier such as a four mixing process in rubidium vapor. We can characterize the system by the looking at the quadrature of the light such as amplitude and phase shown in X and Y in the figure. We can, we can find the noise of the quadrature is reduced below the shunt noise limit and we call this one squeezing. If the quadrature of the one mode is squeezed, we call it single mode squeeze light. And if the difference of the two amplitude quadrature or some of the two phase quadrature is below the shunt noise limit, we call it two mode squeeze light. In crystal, it has been shown 15 dB of single mode squeezing and in four mixing process in our lab, we can generate about 9 dB of intensity difference squeezing. For example, in the two-mode squeeze state, uh, we can verify the entanglement by looking at the correlation between the two amplitude and the anti-correlation of the two-phase quadrature by measuring these two measure quadrature together that we can, uh, this is sufficient and necessary to show that we have a continuous variable entanglement. Uh, by taking these two squeeze states, we can combine them to generate the multi-partite entanglement. For example, we can combine the two single mode squeeze state mixing with the beam splitter to generate the entanglement. And after that, we can create the multiparty entanglement by adding the array of the beam splitters. Similarly, creating the entanglement by the parametric amplifier. And after that, we can extend it to the multiparty using the array of the parametric amplifiers. However, those proposals rely on the array of the beam splitters and parametric amplifiers there are two limitations. First, this requires the mixing with the entangled state with the vacuum state. And any losses from the beam splitter or parametric amplifier will cumulatively grow as the number of the mode increases. This mixing and loss can impact the level of the entanglement. To avoid this limitation, we propose the parametric amplifier network in which we put the vacuum state as an input state so that we don't have any mixing uh, after, the, after we generate generate the multi, uh, multi entanglement. So here's a proposal. I will first show that the uh, four mode genuine multi entanglement. After that, I will explain how we can generalize the larger multi system. And as, you, as I mentioned that all the input state is a vacuum mode. And first, we use the two parametric amplifier in the first stage to connect the mode between A and B and C and D. And after that, we switch the mode between B and D we call this one switchboard operation. Finally, using the two parametric amplifier to connect the rest of the system, A and D, and C and B. This makes the four mode entanglement. 
And we show here in the right, this is a, a graphical representation that green represents the first stage connection and black represents the second uh, stage connection. In order to verify we have a genuine multiparty entanglement, we choose to use the positive partial transpose called PPT criteria. To do this, first we, char we characterize the continuous variable system by looking at the covariance matrix using the two quadratures. Due to the uncertainty relationship or the physical state, we follow this relationship. However, when you partial transpose the subsystem, noted by the tilta here, if the state is entangled, then these partial transpose will make the system not physical. And by checking the positivity of the eigenvalue, we can conclude that system is inseparable. For pure state, the criteria is equivalent to the following criteria. And by checking the all possible subsystem and verify the system is not bipartite separable, we can conclude that this system is genuinely entangled. For example, in four cases, in four mode case, we need to test the seven different PPT criteria. Total possible number of the PPT criteria is calculated using the combination. So we can have uh, four cases of the one by three partitions and three cases of the two by two partitions. Which is not as a four choose one and four choose two. For the two by two case, we need to divide by two due to the symmetry to prevent the double counting. After checking all possible partitions, we can conclude that the system is genuinely multipartite entangled. Here's a result of the PPT criteria for the four mode system. This plot represents a violation of the PPT criteria by looking at the smallest eigenvalue. And when, you, when the eigenvalue is equal to one, it represents the system is separable. And as it goes smaller, it represents the system is inseparable. And each axis represent the degree of the squeezing parameter, it means that how strong the parameter amplifier for the first stage and second stage is connecting the two modes together. For example, if the squeezing of 1.2, this implies a 10 dB of squeezing, and each plot here represents a different partition of the PPT criteria. For the first plot here, this represents by one by three separability, and due to the symmetry of the system, all the plot for four different PPT criteria are identical. And as it can be expected, that if there is no squeezing equal to zero, then parametric amplifier is not connecting any mode and the two partition is not entangled. However, as we see that the two, uh, when we increase the squeezing for the first stage and second stage, it start become uh, violating the PPT criteria, which means that these two start getting entangled each other. On the right side of the plot, you can notice that it is the independent of the first stage connection and the second stage connection. And it is because that our partition only depend on the second stage connection here and first stage connection. For the last partition, this, as you can see in this uh, partition plot, that this depend on the first and second stage connection. That's why we see the violation also depend on the first and second stage. To verify the junior multiparty entanglement, we need to show that all partition are entangled. So by combining all these figures, we can conclude that we have a genuine multiparty entanglement if we have any squeezing greater than zero for the both, both stage. This system can be extended to a higher number of the mode. By carefully choosing the switchboard operation, we can create a six and eight mode genuine multiparty entanglement. For example, to check the PPT criteria for the six cases, we need to check the six partition of the one by five and 15 partitions of two by four and 10 partitions for the three by three. By testing 31 different PPT criteria, we can conclude that we have a genuine multiparty entanglement for the six modes. And by testing 162 PPT criteria, we can conclude that we have a genuine multiparty entanglement for the eight party system. So here's a result of the, all the possible PPT criteria for the six and eight cases. To visualize the data, we assume that first stage and second stage parameters are the same, and an x axis represents the smallest eigenvalue, which represents the entanglement. As you can see, that all the plot violate the entanglement, uh, violate the PPT criteria when we have a squeezing, which means that we have a genuine multiparty entanglement for the six and eight cases. It is also possible to scale up to the multiparty entanglement for the large number by carefully choosing the switchboard operation here. 
And here's a graphical representation shows that how this system looks. We are currently looking at the covariance matrix to prove that we can generate the scalable genome multiparty entanglement. Fortunately, we can see some of the symmetry of the covariance matrix. So we are confident that we can generalize to prove that we have a genome multiparty entanglement. In conclusion, we show that we can generate a genome multiparty entanglement using the parametric amplifier network. Using PPT criteria, we verify that we can generate a genome multiparty entanglement for the four, six, and eight cases. Currently, we are working on the proof of the scalability, and also we are trying to realize this system experimentally using the Fourier mixing process in rubidium vapor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sesson. Um, so, do you not see any question? Actually, I might have a, just a very basic question. Basically, like, so if it comes down to like, what's the upper bound on um, like the, your multi-mode entangled system? So how many modes is like, like, is it like for you probably it's, it's a calculation, but like, do you have any sense of like, what would put a fundamental limit to it? Are you talking about experimentally or theoretically? Because theoretically it's unlimited, right? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. And uh, well, for you, I think like, might be just a com computational resource. Yeah, so right. computationally, it becomes start, it becomes challenging as you can see that it start grow like for we need to test the thirty one and when I increase to eight mode we have to test one hundred sixty two. Right. And it grow exponentially, so then we have to test like thousands of PPT criteria. So that that's why here I stop here. Yeah. So I want to look at the PPT criteria, just uh, looking at the covariance matrix to find some rules then I want to prove that we can have a just genuine multiparty in any cases. That's what I'm working on right now. So theoretically, if I can just show it 100 mode, then I should, I mean, it's a theory. I should have 100 mode. But experimentally, it's like, it will be challenging. Yeah. Because of the losses from the system. That's right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for your question.